We are thrilled to be working with an iconic team that has built some of the most played, most watched franchises in the entire world. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here, and today I am giving the official Halo Infinite Season 4 preview that should have been here during the Xbox Showcase. With less than a week before the Halo Infinite Season 4 officially drops, giving us a mound of different types of content, my job is to make sure you have all the information that you need to know in order to fully embrace the new season update and to enjoy it to its full capacity. I'll be breaking down the upcoming Season 4 into four different categories. I'll dive into the multiplayer, game modes, and the new maps, progression, forge, as well as the new season pass with its customization alongside the store. Does season four have the goods to bring Halo fans back to this game? Has 343 finally shocked us with the amount of content they're finally bringing to Halo Infinite. Let's jump right into this. First, let's talk about the multiplayer game modes, maps, and much more along with this season update. Now, the biggest thing that most people are going to kind of talk about here is going to be the introduction or the re-emergence of Infection back into the Halo universe. For those people who don't know, Infection has always been a part of Halo ever since Halo 3 had its own Infection playlist alongside it. We are finally getting Infection. I honestly, I am excited to be able to see it. And basically, Infection is going to start out where a few different Spartans are going to be what they consider the Alpha Zombies. Now, these Alpha Infected are going to be the ones that will have the most abilities like invisibility, and their job is then to infect everybody else, turning them into what they call Beta Zombies. And essentially, as more people get infected, it's the job of the Soul Survivor to uh, try to survive for roughly 30 seconds or as long as humanly possible until they get killed. Pretty standard game mode and honestly most people including myself are going to be just excited to finally jump back into effect. Another major thing that we are seeing with the new game modes is the introduction or re-emergence again of the ranked Team Slayer playlist. It is honestly one of the most favored or really sought after ranked game modes that we haven't had since Halo 5. A lot of people who play Team Slayer today are honestly just itching for that ranked Team Slayer playlist. So having ranked Team Slayer back into the fold really is exciting to see. But I think this will be one of those rotational ones that will come back even if it goes away for roughly a, like a month, it will come back again um, and a different date. And to be honest, I think all the modes that they are adding are all pretty damn solid. I think that season four does a great job and introducing a lot more social modes as well as the most favored or most enjoyed ranked mode from the previous Halo games. And I will be jumping into that ranked playlist that I felt cling to throughout Halo 5. As much as I lo loved Arena, I felt like Team Slayer was probably my most played ranked mode. Now with the map, we do need to talk about the, the confirmed two that will be added, but there's also others that are also been stated to also drop during season four. The first one's gonna be Forest, and Forest is an arena map that gives off a lot of vibes of Delta Halo. A lot of greenery, a lot of water spaces that are there as well. It looks pretty sizable, similar to things like Behemoth or the launch site and the amount of you know combat scenarios that you can get with this type of map. Nextly, let's talk about Scar. And Scar is a banished dig site. It has a similar aesthetic to what we saw with, with uh, Breaker but is going to be set in a different location where instead of it being more in desertous area like it was with breaker it's going to be entire molten lava like you're sitting in a volcano now when you look at the overall map itself it looks pretty sizable i think overall it's bigger than breaker but their one thing i will kind of criticize them for and i want to get into the map first before i can give any official judgments but it seems like they're very limited or restricting the movements of vehicles to certain lanes and that was one of the biggest problems that breaker has currently that it seems like a very three lane ish map. And I think that is what breaks that that kind of replayability of Breaker because it limits the kind of confrontations you could have. Like in comparison, if you bring in Oasis, it's a massive map with multiple different ways to combat and move around. And that's why that is considered the best map in Halo Infinite right now. You know, Scar looks really cool and has a really cool aesthetic and the you know, location is really nice. The only thing I, that can get me nervous about it is that it might seem too restricted for vehicle combat, which is Big Team Battle's mainstay. So I think that will be something that is going to be interesting. Now, the third map, which has been confirmed, essentially will be dropping during season four. They didn't say the date or the time. It might not be coming day one, but it might be coming in within the first month. And that is the Plaza remake. And a lot of people have been waiting for this to arrive. It was supposed to come in during season three, but it was pushed into season four. Uh, I'm wondering what the biggest problem is. I think when you look at 
this Plaza remake, it is themes or the aesthetic is completely different. Plaza remake is going to basically be a facility that was abandoned and that's kind of giving a completely different vibe to what the original Plaza was back in Halo 5. The original Plaza was a city, so it kind of had a different look to it. A lot of people are kind of already tossing this map into the garbage can saying it's going to be bad because it doesn't look the same, just like they did with the pit. But overall, when you still play a map that you like, it's still going to be fun, whether it's exactly the same way as it did for the previous game or it's brand new. As long as you get a map that's solid, that's all I really care about here. So I'm excited for Plaza Remake to finally get back into the fray. It's a good map for Team Slayer, for King of the Hill, for Strongholds, for Control. I think overall it's a good good location to bring back. They also are all bringing in Forge creations, and we saw that with the trailer talking about you know Daimyo and, and other maps that were created by the community for Doubles and Team Slayer. Now the big question I have, and they actually did mention this during the live stream, big team battle Forge maps are also being collected right now, and they're going to be produced into it seems like season four. I could be wrong, but they did make the statement that they are collecting Forge maps from the community to include in a BTB Forge Creations playlist or just be added right into Big Team Battle, which I think would be fantastic. Please, God, bring those in because there are some great map designs or creations like from those from Hemorrhage or even updated versions of those that are actually really dope. And I really would like to see them brought into Halo Infinite. Now we have to talk about the sandbox. So this includes new equipments. For example, the new ones that will be added for season four is the Threat Seeker and the Quantum Translocator. So firstly, the Threat Seeker had the probably the most controversial look for showcase during the HCS Dallas Finals. And basically this was an adaption of what we call the Threat Sensor which is going to show different enemies kind of located around. Now, the biggest thing that I think a lot of people are going to criticize this is that if it's similar to the wall hack where it, you can show through walls and it can go show to everybody, then it's going to be very difficult to include this in ranked. But they did address this saying that it's more has to be more of a skill gap where you have to hit people directly or within the general range of its explosion to show different enemy locations. And it's only going to be in the line of sight as you can't shoot through walls with this ability which does make it a lot more efficient. The second one with the Quantum Translocator, I think this one is probably the most exciting because it is something that no one has ever seen in a Halo game before. The Quantum Translocator is basically an ability that we saw with Tracer back in Overwatch, allowing you to rewind or go back to a previous location that you marked. And I think this would greatly change the meta of the game, basically adding a new ability that can really shift a lot of the you know power or, or really the control of the maps by having this ability in here. And I think it's great for social game modes, but one thing that gets me nervous is whether or not you can use this for, you know, having objective game modes like capture the flag or others, you know, set your locator one area, challenge a different point, and then transfer it back once someone's attacking you. I wonder how long does this kind of last for, or how far away can you be when you can then transfer yourself back to your original location. I think that's going to be a big question that we'll see once we get to play more around with it and as we get closer to launch day of season four. Now, next that we need to talk about is progression, and this is probably one of the most exciting or most sought after updates, and this is going to be the new creation of the ranking system when it comes to just going through the game and obviously getting around 270 ranks based off of Halo Reach's kind of military rank style that goes all the way from cadet to general. And there are so many different ranks that you can get or go through based on your performance. And I think that's the best thing is that you're going to be progressing from zero to 270 when it comes to, you know, the start of season four. And basically each tier has three separate ranks within it. So from basically going from, uh, you know, from bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, and onyx, you're going to get that same system that we saw with HCS rankings, but now brought to just progression. And basically based on how you do in different matches, and as you rank through the different tiers, you will then move on to the different branches. And I think the best part about this is that there's so many different level ups that you can do. And on top of that, they actually give the player the ability to show off what rank they got. And they show this during the live stream where on the side of your emblem and your banner, there's going to be that ranking that shows people that you play against or you who you kill or get killed by that this is my ranking in the progression system. And I guess gives like that vibe of, hey, we're actually showing you that you can kind of Tell others, hey, I, I, I kind of grinded for this level and here's the results of that. And I think this is a good one to see. It's not the same thing as Halo Reach where it has very unique rankings, but at the end of the day, like this is way better than what they had for Halo Infinite. And I think it's better than Halo 5s, to be honest. Next up, let's talk about Forge. And biggest things that Forge are, are really adding a lot of adjustments or additions to Forge to make it a lot more smoother 
as well as add new things to make new maps become very more diverse. And the biggest thing is static water. Now, granted, there's caveats to this. I think scaling water is a great thing. It makes a lot of cool aesthetic that you can make for different maps, and they showed off different ways you can do it. But the problem that is a static object means that you're not going to get the same like sound effects or, you know, falling into war is not going to have like the motion of it going to be different. So it's going to be very like cyberpunkish early on PS4 type of water. And yes, that's cool for map design and themes but the movements and the kind of real the realism of it is not going to be there so there are some good things with that but also bad yeah additions of forerunner objects i think are going to be great because now you can scale them as much as you want and they have a whole new set of kind of pieces and you know or things you can add to your buildings which make them a lot more diverse so we'll be able to see a lot more forerunner based maps in forge creations the fx improvements i think is also a really cool thing because now you can upscale any FX kind of design. Like for example, um, Unishek on stream had showed off that there was like a fire or a flame that normally is really small. You can't usually upscale it to be any size you want. But now that you can, he made a giant grunt that when he basically made kind of the flames along his plasma grenades, kind of the same size or upscale to that level. And that means you could do that for any object, including uh, energy shields or anything along those lines. And lastly, adding mini game modes to Forge means that people will be able to create Griff Ball or other game modes in Forge, which now will actually, to be honest, make Griff Ball probably arrive faster in Halo Infinite compared to what people thought originally. And lastly, let's talk about the customization and the season pass. And honestly, when you think about the season pass, I was a whole new hundred tiers that you can unlock. And I really did enjoy kind of looking at the, the, the season pass itself because I thought that it did add a lot of cool kind of attachments or armors or even color schemes that I think look pretty imp uh, impressive overall. Firstly, you get the fact that you can get a thousand credits by just playing the game is a great thing. And I like this practice that they did originally, but the new core that you're getting is the hazmat core, very unique. It kind of gives off the vibe of like avoiding poisonous gases. Um, and they made, they said, according to the lore, it's helping them uh, stop getting infected by, you know, uh, Eratus and, uh, and really stopping this spreading to other different uh, Spartans along the way. But I really like the aesthetic of it. The helmets look way better compared to what we saw in other seasons. Like, I like the different armors they added, but there are some helmets that we saw from season three or even season two that just did not look that great compared to ones that you would expect. I think the biggest thing that customization wise was improved or added is the different weapon models that you can get and i think they added weapon models for the ar the sidekick the battle rifle and the bulldog each one of them has different models that now you can either buy or unlock by just progressing through the season pass which is awesome now the store update is probably the thing that i'll uh, talk shortest about because the fact is you're it's still pretty money grubbing to want more money for bundles but they did definitely change the ui of it to make it look a little bit better and based on the the, the kind of the preview that we got from three for three the bundles look a lot more like worthy of buying but at the end of the day they did not show you what the prices were on live stream so i'm wondering what the money level is going to be for us to buy certain ones they definitely make it look more appealing to buy but i, I don't know if it's going to be worth it based on the price and i have to wait and see what that's going to be and lastly the hcs bundles all look pretty dope they give you basically the entire color scheme for all your weapons the only downside is you can't really customize the color to fit your spartan which is whatever i mean at the end of the day i'd like to do that for myself i think having these available and included into any bundle you purchase is the new br model that looks like you have a silencer on it which i think most people will buy it one just for that reason now overall i think when i look at season four is honestly the biggest content dump that we've seen in any season so far in halo infinite giving us something on multiple different tiers is a great thing to see and whenever you get a new season an update like this it is a sign of moving in the right direction having new modes maps and different ways to play is always a good especially when you see how halo infinite has lacked that type of stuff from the very beginning customizations are pretty badass obviously the the issues with the store being as money grubbing as they normally are is a downside but customizations have gotten a big boost here and there's a lot more different things you can customize to make your Spartan feel unique. Forge is always going to be the backbone of Halo multiplayer, and the fact you're adding more things to Forge to make the maps become more diverse is a good thing to see overall. I will be giving my official review of Halo Infinite Season 4 
in the coming days. But I gotta say, I am extremely excited to jump into a new season of content. And especially with the amount of things being added to this game and this coming update, it's going to be impressive to see how does the entire Halo community and kind of the player count react to this type of level of content being added back into the game. Hopefully this is a swing in the right direction and we'll only see as time goes on. Thank you everyone for watching. Let me know what you think about the Halo Season 4 preview. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.